Welcome, it's a great day to be a miner because we got ourselves a brand new piece of hardware. We're gonna unbox this in just a few minutes, but first, let's spin that intro. And we're back! In this box, I have a beautiful brand new ASIC miner. This is finally here. I've been waiting for one of these things because I was late to the party. This would be an Ice River KSO CAS ASIC miner. And man, I am really excited to finally get one of these in hand. I ordered it off of the later batch, the July batch through Crypto Miner Bros. It came quick, it came efficient, and I didn't have to pay any of the painful import duties or any of that. I just ordered it. Full payment, used Coinbase Pay, it paid easily, quickly, and they shipped it pretty quick, and I got it here in my hand. So without further ado, let's open this thing up and take a look at it and do a nice little unboxing, check this thing out fully, and then of course we're going to get this thing set up and mining. We really got to get this thing mining and try to get as much income as we can before the big boy Bitmain ASICs come on and just smash the hash rate all to pieces on the CAS uh, algorithm. So, so yeah, without further ado, you know what time it is, RGB knife. Yes gets old let's cut this open let's take a look and see exactly what's in the box, what's in the box? all right all right all right By the way, make sure to check out Crypto Miner Bros. I'll put a link down in the description with my code ALTSAVE50 to save $50 off of your orders. So first off, it's packed very nicely in here, all completely entombed in a really thick, dense foam. So that's a plus. I know that it shipped safely clear across seas. And now let's take it out of here. First and foremost, we've got a power cord. Yeah, that's not going to work for us here, is it? This is US, so that cord's not going to work. But I already knew that because Red Panda showed a video of it. And it uses this uh, semi-standard uh, cord that some of the older laptops and monitors actually use. It has like three uh, circles in kind of a triangle shape. So I'm sure I have a regular 120 uh, US plug for this laying around that we're going to use. And then this is the power brick that goes with it. And then there's nothing else in here except the actual Ice River ASIC itself. And it's in there pretty good. So, whoa, had to put some effort on that one. So, yep, that's all that's in there. Let me make sure that there's no kind of paperwork hiding underneath of there. Nope, that is it. Easy peasy. Let's get that box out of there. So, yeah, that is the ASIC itself. It's very nice. It looks brand new. It doesn't have any scuffs or scratches where it looks like it's been repackaged or anything like that. And it is pretty heavy. Um, we could probably get a weight on this thing real quick. It has really good fins, fin stack across it, of course, for the cooling. And then it has a bracket right here where you can screw on a 120 millimeter fan. And since these things have a USB, you can easily put your 120 millimeter fan on there, plug it in with your USB. And then on your back, you've got your ethernet uh, plug right here. And then you've got a USB-C and then where your regular power adapter plugs in the little round plug. And then on the back, you've got your two little mini ASIC fans down here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to get a 120 fan right here. And of course, you know I gotta get an RGB one. so got to add that extra hash rate. I've got an RGB 120 millimeter fan up here. I'll put a link down in the description for it too. There's actually a two pack for only like 20 bucks on Amazon and I'm going to strap that right on there and it's going to look good with the little RGB fan and I think that's about it and it'll be pulling up so the air will push in and come on out the top and it actually really significantly helps to improve the cooling as i've seen a couple of the other youtubers already have done so yeah there's it we're going to weigh this thing and then we're going to take a good close-up look of it and then of course we'll go get it set up let's go All right, first things first, the cord that they send with you, this is the plug that they send with you, but it uses this standard, I think it's a five C5 plug. 
and you can take this off of an old laptop. Almost all old laptops use this same part plugged into the power brick. So that's what I did. I took the same existing pigtail part that hooks to the power pack and I replaced it with an old laptop part. And then all I've done so far is I've got the power brick, I've got it plugged in, I hooked in my ethernet cable and there it is, it's booted up and you can see there is internet activity. So yeah, that's a plus. Now that is the first, that is actually the all the physical setup there is to this thing. Now we need to go do an IP scanner and we have to find what IP this thing is connecting to. That way we can log into the software and that we can actually set up the mining on this thing, set up a pool and all those fun pieces and actually get this thing going because until you get it on a pool, it's not really doing anything, but you can see it's hooked up up here. It's next to my 12 by 30, 70 rig right there. And then I have it plugged into a router that's actually repeating the signal and providing me with some hard lines. So what that's doing is connecting to the main network, the main router, and that's just doing a repeater. And then that way it is on the same exact network and I should be able to find it with an IP scanner. If it's not on the same exact network, it is a pain because you have to be able to find it if you're going to log into the dashboard. So yeah, let's go do that now. I'm going to use a software called Thing, but there are many different IP scanners. And what that does is it'll scan a certain network and whichever network you connect to, and it will find all the devices that are logged onto there. And this will come up with a strange name, but let's go ahead and get that part going. All right, there she is. She's finally up and mining. And well, what did I have to do? I had to first find the IP and to actually log into the software. And we're gonna go over all that and show that in detail. But I had a real hard time finding this thing to find the IP. I tried an IP scanner, I tried Fing, could not find it. I ended up just logging into the main router and I'll show you how to do that. As long as you know your password, you can get into it. Um, so yeah, I went into it, then I went into the advanced properties. I found all the connected devices and then I found the two or three that were not labeled and I was able to log in and I found which one this was. And then I was able to set up the miner itself, install all the new firmware and uh, adjust the fan speed and actually get this thing mining. So we're gonna go over all that, but yeah, there it is, it's up and mining. Let's go over to the computer and we'll go through the detailed setup so that you can follow along. Let's go. All right, so here we are, we're in our uh, remote session. We're gonna quickly show you how we set up our Ice River cast miner, our ASIC miner. First things first, you need to find the IP address of your connected device. I couldn't find the connected device with Fing and I couldn't find it with an IP scanner and it's due to the way I have multiple routers and relaying and what I ended up doing is I logged into the primary router this which I have Spectrum as my mo my provider so to log into the main router and this is true with most providers your your main router is going to be 192.168.1.1 and it'll come up to your login screen and you have to already know your login. By default, it's most of them are admin, admin. So once I was here, I went ahead and logged in. I put in my username, password, admin, admin. From there, from my dashboard, I went to advanced options, advanced network options. Then I went to uh, show all current users. And what that did was it provided me with a list of every device that was logged in or relayed in through the main router that the uh, main cable modem is plugged into. And from there, I was able to discern which uh, IP address I used for the Ice River. I went and found it. It was, in my instance, 192.168.1.89. And of course, it's going to vary depending on whatever IP is assigned by your router. Most people use dynamic routing so that the router itself will assign that number out to whatever device. And then whenever that session is connected, that's the number that it keeps, at least for that session. So in my instance, I was able to get there and then I logged in. Your default login for Ice River um, is admin, and then it is one through eight. So the password is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that brings me to the first thing you should do when you log into your Ice River. You go under your user settings and you're going to change your password. That's the first thing you should do. 
The second thing you should do before you bother with setting everything up, your mining setting up, set up, you should go download the newest firmware and then update your device. Two ways you can do this. Number one, you can go to Ice River. You can Google Ice River um, firmware update and it'll link you in. Make sure you're in the official Ice River page. Download the newest update or you could go to Rabid Mining. My man Rabid Mining is keeping a repository on his website. I'll put a link down in the description and you can go there and you download the newest for Ice River. And then of course you go to your firmware upgrade you just from while you're logged in here you would go select your file that'll browse into your computer that you're remoted from select your file and then hit update and then now you have your passwords changed your firmware is updated to the newest version the next thing you want to do is you want to get this thing mining so you click your mining settings here is where you're going to put your pool you're going to put in your wallet and for your password most places you're going to use an x then you're going to save your setting and now you have your pool in there. You already have everything set up. The one caveat that you need to know about this Ice River KSO is that, that fan speed. For somewhere, this new firmware, when you're booting it, those little mini ASIC fans aren't spinning for some reason. It, and Ice River has put out a statement saying that it will once it gets hot enough, but it feels like to me they have to get pretty hot before those little fans kick on. So for me, I'm putting my fan speed at 75%. So I click this box, I put 75, and then I save, and that'll whirl those fans up at 75% and keep them there. And then now once they're whirling, now your pool's in there, your worker's name, it should start mining. If you click your home tab, you should be able to see your hash rate up here. You'll see your five minute hash rate, a 30 minute hash rate, you'll see your um, continued hash rate in a graph, ups and downs, and then you'll see your pool rejection rate. Okay, so now you've got it running, you've got it up and mining in your Ice River dashboard. Now you wanna go over to your pool and make sure that it's showing there. Again, it might take 10 minutes to show up on there. Make sure that it's hashing away and your hash rate is showing on the dashboard and it is hashing properly and you're getting accepted shares. And once you're mining for long enough, you'll start to get an average. Then you'll get some projected estimated daily rewards. I actually have two of the KSOs up and running on this dashboard. So you can see that I have um, 180 giga hash, which again, I'm losing 10 giga hash per after my rejected shares and after all the latency it is what it is and so it's actually saying that i'm making 38 dollars 55 worth of cash per day after everything's exchanged said and done i'm getting about 34 dollars a day of bitcoin so not too bad um especially considering you're only using 65 watts per asic man that that efficiency is absurd so yeah there is our complete setup. We've got it mining. We've got it all set up. We've got it tweaked. We've got the fans tuned. We've got our password changed. We've got it secured. We're on a new pool. It's hashing away. It's producing. That is the full setup for this guy. The hardest part for me is, of course, finding my IP. Once you find your IP, you got to get logged in. You got to be connected on the same network. If you try to log in from a browser on a different network, it may not find your IP. So make sure it's on the same network, um, connect in, change your fans, update your firmware, um, add your pool, add your miner, get it hashing away. And yeah, we're gonna do some follow-up content on this. And we're gonna do maybe an earnings report, see how much it's going down. We'll keep an update on the network hash rate, and then we'll probably do some tweaking and some tuning on these coming up. So yeah, that about wraps it up. If you have any questions, concerns, make sure to post them down below. Check my, my channel for future content, and if you like the video, smash that like button. Thanks for coming along. Let's go ahead and cut to that outro.